We're back with WSJ Lunch Break. I'm Wendy Bounds. The divorce rate in America jumping for couples over age 50. One catalyst, the kids are finally out of the house, and it is just you two, Elizabeth Bernstein, our Bonds columnist. She reports on the trend and some interesting steps couples are taking to save their marriage. She's also joined by Lisa and Emil Stossel. They have their own experience to share. Thank you so much for all of you uh, for being here. Elizabeth, now you think this would be a time of great growth for couples because they can finally focus on themselves again when the kids are gone. But what happens sometimes instead? What happens is if they haven't really focused on each other and on their relationship for the last 10, 20 years, uh, they sort of wake up almost as strangers once those kids are gone. So they look forward to this time of increased intimacy, more fun, more time together, but they don't really know each other. They don't know how to talk to each other anymore. Lisa and Emil, is this what happened when your youngest daughter left the nest? Des describe sort of how things unfolded in your relationship. Yeah, pretty much. That's what happened. Um, you know, the disagreements earlier get pushed aside because you want to keep a peaceful environment for the children. And then um, suddenly they're gone and the disagreements are front and center and they don't simmer away uh, by the end of the day. They're still there. So... That's about what happened. And, and I know you two had, had gone to had tried therapy, you tried many things to sort of reconnect. Uh, you finally came to a very uh, unusual but but useful solution, uh, and that you 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 had a, you got another house. How did that come into play? Well, it had gotten to the point where um, just things had gotten so toxic between us. There was just constant arguing and bitterness and resentment and I had gotten to the point where I just felt that I couldn't live here anymore. I couldn't live under the same roof, roof with Emil and so we were sort of headed toward divorce. It seemed like the only option until as I started looking at other places to live I realized that maybe we didn't have to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Maybe we didn't have to actually let go of our relationship maybe if we live separately, our differences could resolve a little bit more smoothly. And so that's what we did. We just got another place for me to live. And we remained married, very married, and um, in the hopes that we'd really be able to reconstruct our marriage. And that's exactly what happened. It, hap it worked so well that I ended up writing a book about it. And that was called Living Happily Ever After Separately. We're looking at a, the book cover right there. Elizabeth, uh, you know, a happy ending for them. Their marriage did not end in divorce, but that's not the case uh, with many couples. Put some numbers on this divorce over 50 trend for us. Well, sociologists have looked at this, and they found that over the last 20 years, the they call it the gray divorce rate. The rate of divorce over people over 50 is really uh, skyrocketed. So in 1990, it was one in 10 individuals who were getting divorced were over 50. Now it's one in four. So um, it has risen. And obviously preparation is key for the day the kids leave so you don't get caught alone with a stranger in the house. Elizabeth Bernstein, she'll explain more in her column, her bonds column tomorrow in the Personal Journal. Thanks so much to all of you for being with us and for sharing your story. I appreciate that.